Hey there students, this is our third installment of AP Euro Q&A, and I'm going to do this one on the drive home. Been busy trying to get stuff ready for the exam, get some PowerPoints up, get some videos recorded hopefully, work on my review guide that's available at tomritchie.net slash euro. So make sure that you're looking at that. I'll be updating and try to get a few more units up. So let's take a question. This is from Idol Rozzy. I'm not going to read Idol's question verbatim because I'm in the car and that would not be safe. So Idol has a question about maps. Do I need to study the map of Europe for the AP Euro exam? If so, which map or maps? Simple answer is yes, you do need to study maps. All right, so I'm going to give you just a few guidelines. First of all, make sure that you know where all of the major countries in Europe are. Think about in terms of the great powers. Think about France, Britain, Germany, Russia. Also, think about Italy and Spain, Greece, any of these countries that you've heard of that are important. Make sure that you know where they are. Also, major cities like you know, London, Vienna, Moscow, that you can, Paris, that you could associate with these countries. So, simple introduction to a map of Europe, yes. I've got one available on the website somewhere. I'll try to put a link in this video, maybe something like right there or something like that. So, besides knowing where things are, there are a couple of things that I find especially important for the exam. First of all is a religious map of Europe. You need to see where is there a Catholic majority, where is there a Protestant majority. For example, if you look at the countries closest to Rome, you can see Italy, Spain, France. Those countries are predominantly Catholic. So is Poland. If you look at Germany, North Germany is Protestant. South Germany is Catholic. Austria is Catholic. Of course, England, Church of England, Scotland, Presbyterian, and then Ireland, remaining Catholic, maybe in part to spite the British or something like that. So you need to know that, of course, Eastern Europe, Greece and Russia and some of these other Eastern European countries, predominantly Orthodox. So know that, and of course, as you're going into Constantinople and Turkey, which uh, the Ottoman Empire, Muslim. So consider all of that as you're getting ready, but know also that not only is Europe diverse religiously, but also diverse in the level of religiosity. If you look at a modern map of Europe, you can see, for example, I've you know seen this one that's on Wikipedia that I'll put up that is a map of atheism in Europe. And you go from places like France and the Czech Republic, where a lot of people claim to be atheists, to places like Ireland and Italy and Greece where there are almost no atheists. Of course, when you think about Ireland, Italy, and Greece, the national identity has to do with your religious identity. Also, Polish. You think about Poles, Irish, Italians, they're Catholic. Greeks are Orthodox. So keep in mind that in some places in Europe, people are very religious, and in some places they're not so religious, or just less people are religious. So just consider the religious distribution, the religious diversity in Europe, and know how that's reflected in general on maps. Another map that really needs to be studied for the exam is the map of Africa at the time of the new imperialism in the late 19th century. If you look at a map of Africa, you need to just keep in mind where these empires are, okay? So the French Empire is going to be in the northwest of Africa. If you think about this section here, you're going to see the French. Then you're going to see the British kind of cut a line down from Egypt in the northeast to South Africa. You've got a line down there. In fact, Cecil Rhodes, Sir Cecil Rhodes is pictured straddling the continent of Africa from one end of the British Empire in Egypt to the other in South Africa. The Belgians, right in the middle, in the Belgian Congo, where some really bad things happened uh, to the native inhabitants over rubber. The Italians, we're in Libya, so a little little place there. And, you know, unless you're Herman Cain, that shouldn't be a lot of trouble there. 
And then, really, the complicated part, the Germans and the Portuguese. Now, they kind of flip-flop like this. They, the Germans and the Portuguese each have like colonies that go like that. The only difference is that the Germans have three colonies, whereas the Portuguese only have two. One other thing you need to know is that there are two places in Africa that were not taken over by European nations. One of those is Liberia, which was put there by the United States, really. The United States uh, had already kind of laid kind of an unofficial protective claim over that because this is where freedmen and women were sent uh, to be colonized uh, during the early 19th century from the United States. And then there's Ethiopia. The Italians were just unsuccessful in trying to get it. So keep that in mind, just a general knowledge also, okay, also, know the difference between Western Europe, Central Europe, and Eastern Europe, okay? So Western Europe, you're talking about Britain, France, those countries, Central Europe, Germany, Italy, um, then maybe Poland, but Poland's kind of also going into Eastern Europe. So keep that in mind. They might ask you about that. Now, typically, Western Europe is more populous, more wealthy, that sort of thing. So know the differences there, Western Europe, Central Europe, and Eastern Europe, because you could be asked some things about that. So know your general stuff about Europe. Know Western Europe, Central Europe, Eastern Europe. Know the religious distribution, also the religiosity of the population of some of these countries, and the map of Africa during the time of the new imperialism. And you should be pretty much set for the exam. I'll answer some more questions, so keep sending them in. TR at TomRitchie.net, at Tom Ritchie. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, all of that other stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and finish my drive home. We'll take some more questions soon. Until next time.